Chad, good morning. Good to be with you. I appreciate you joining us today. We have a lot of ground to cover. Uh, I want to start off with Na- uh, with NAFTA. You released a, uh, a plan, uh, and I know a video uh, came out yesterday of uh, some NAFTA reno- renegotiations and, and really some of your ideas behind what you would like to see changed along with NAFTA, correct? Uh, that, that's right. And, you know, when it, when it comes to NAFTA, the, the most frequent concern I hear from Texas farmers, Texas ranchers, Texas business owners, uh, is what's going to happen with trade, and and NAFTA in particular. Uh, Texas has done very, very well under NAFTA. Now, in my view, NAFTA renegotiation, it could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. If NAFTA renegotiation is used to further expand our access to the markets in Mexico and Canada to enable our farmers and ranchers and manufacturers to sell more of our good, more goods, more of our crops, more of our livestock, that's a good thing. If, on the other hand, it is used as, as, as an, a vehicle to erect barriers to the American market to shut down trade, that would be a bad thing. And, and so I have enthusiastically urged the president to use NAFTA renegotiation to expand trade and specifically the idea that, that, that you're referencing is, is I joined with two other senators, Cory Gardner from Colorado, and Steve Dane from Montana, and, and we urge the president to use NAFTA renegotiation as a vehicle for regulatory reform to put into law to codify uh, lifting the regulatory burdens of Washington on small businesses and job creators, and in particular, to use that to enact what's called the RAINS Act. The RAINS Act is, is legislation I'm an original sponsor of that says any economic regulation that imposes $100 million or more of cost on the economy cannot go into effect without Congress voting up or down on it. It means you can't have unelected bureaucrats doing things like the Waters of the United States rule without ever any member of Congress having to vote on it. Right. If, if we enacted that, it would be the most meaningful regulatory reform, the, the most important relief from job-killing regulations we've ever enacted, and if it's attached to NASA, it goes straight to Congress for an expedited vote that can't be filibustered. So the Dem- Democrats do not have the ability to filibuster, it's just the 50-vote threshold. So it would be a tremendous victory for the economy and a tremendous victory for Texas. Visiting with U.S. Senator Ted Cruz, what do you think the president's thinking is right now on NAFTA because we will we'll hear things in spurts but we really haven't seen a, a plan from the president what do you think his thinking is right now uh, you, you know chad i understand the concern uh, across the state and i share that concern uh, that there are voices within the administration on both sides of this issue mm-hmm. and and there are certainly voices within this administration that are they're deep skeptics uh, i have had multiple conversations with the president in the white house where he's asked over and over again, should we pull out of NAFTA altogether? Uh, And my answer has been emphatically no. That would be very bad for Texas and very bad for the country. Uh, I hope he doesn't do that. I don't think he's going to do that. Uh, But what direction NAFTA renegotiation goes, I think, is still up in the air. I'm told we should be seeing something soon, but, but I don't know when. Uh, just the other day, uh, there was a presentation uh, over the Iranian uh, nuclear program. The president is still mulling over whether or not to pull the U.S. out of that uh, out of that agreement. Uh, what were your overall thoughts, and what do you think the president should do? Well, I, I thought it was an incredibly important presentation that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu made. And in fact, I would encourage your listeners uh, to, to take 20 minutes, Google it, and watch it online. It it, it is a speech unlike any speech ever given by any head of state ever, uh, in in, in which Prime Minister Netanyahu walks through systematically laying out the case, and what he describes uh, is that Israeli intelligence officers, the Mossad, captured over 110,000 secret documents from Iran. I mean, it was an incredible intelligence operation. I assume they're going to make movies about it one day. And, and, and these, these secret documents from Iran demonstrate that Iran has been lying for 20 years, that for 20 years Iran has had a secret program working to develop nuclear weapons. They publicly lied about it over and over and over again. And, and Prime Minister Netanyahu makes that case chapter and verse 
using original Iranian documents, using original Iranian photographs, using original Iranian video of their researching trying to develop nuclear weapons. And, and the long and short of it is what he proves conclusively is that the Obama-Iran nuclear deal was built on an edifice of lies. It was one lie after the other after the other. The consequences of that deal are that we're sending billions of dollars to the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism. Iran is directly responsible for murdering hundreds of American servicemen and women. And that if Iran ever gets a nuclear weapon, which has been their singular focus for over two decades, that the odds are unacceptably high that the Ayatollah Khamenei will use that weapon. And so you ask, what should President Trump do? I think the, the, the path is clear. I believe we should withdraw from the Obama-Iran deal immediately. We should reimpose crushing sanctions. We should urge our allies to do the same. And we should make clear that we will do whatever is necessary to make sure that the Ayatollah never, never, never gets nuclear weapons. Senator, I have to let you go. 